Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Christopher Terrence Jones. How are you doing? Hope all is well with you. Hope you're having a fabulous day, week, month, year, and life, and all that good stuff in spite of everything that we're going through. Stay encouraged. You know what to do right now. Hit that bell up there so you're notified every time I drop a new video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You want to follow the Christopher Terrence Jones experience. It's a journey you want to be on with me. And then you got to like, comment, share. Don't keep it to yourself. Tell your friends so y'all can talk about what's going on. All that good stuff. Thank you to my seasoned followers. You guys are amazing. Thank you to my new followers. You guys are rock stars. So let's get into this. <sighs> it's a lot, baby. It's a lot. Just a lot going on in the world. Stephanie Mills, the living legend, the icon herself, did an interview with um, VLAT. If I'm saying it wrong, y'all know. Forgive me. VLAT TV. V-L-A-D TV. And so I saw a clip on, I think it was on TikTok. And it was about... The his name is Sean Perez, I think is his name. He asked her a question about Beyonce. And basically it was like comparing Beyonce to Diana Ross. So I know I'm gonna get in trouble for this, and I know y'all gonna be talking crazy and all of this. But I have to tell my truth, and it's my opinion, and everybody has to understand. Everybody's not going to like the same things that you like. But I wholeheartedly agree with what Stephanie Mills said. You cannot compare Diana Ross and Beyonce. For you young people, you really don't get the gist of what she was breaking down. Diana Ross is royalty. When Diana Ross came out and hit the scene, there was nothing like her. There was nothing like the Supremes. Nobody was selling out arenas. They played places that black people weren't allowed to play. See, young people, you guys think that you just can go anywhere now as an artist. At that time, you couldn't go there. Segregation was still running rampant. And to come from the projects and become one of the biggest stars of all time, one of the living legends, icons. Beyonce is a great entertainer. And I see Beyonce more as an entertainer. I don't see her as a singer because you can't tell me she's a singer when we've had the likes of Gladys Knight, when we've had Aretha Franklin, when we've had Minnie Rippleton, when we've had Phyllis Hyman, Y'all know me. You know I love Phyllis Hyman. We've had Stephanie Mills, Anita Baker, Patti LaBelle. I mean, there's so many names that you can just keep going on and on with people who didn't need mics, who didn't need auto-tune, who flatfoot just stood there and sung until everything inside of you got moved. And it brought you to tears and all of that. I think Beyonce is a great entertainer, but singing wise, no, she's not on their level. And you guys can get mad at me, but the two girls that was in Destiny's Child, um, Latoya Luckett and who I don't, I can't remember the other girl's name. And Kelly are all better singers. Beyonce just had the look and Beyonce had the backing because it was her parents that was pushing the group. So that's why she is the front person. I mean, that's why it's basically the Supremes is, is what happened with the Supremes. Diana got pushed by Barry Gordy and 
she became the front runner and it went from being the Supremes to Diana Ross and the Supremes. Now, let me tell you this. And y'all gonna get mad at me. You're like, oh, that's contradicting. Florence Ballard was the better singer. Florence Ballard was the better singer of the Supremes. And not only was she the better singer, she was also the founder of the group. Let's go there. Let's go there. She was the founder. And there's no reason why she should have died broke. But that's a whole different story. So, as I continue to say, when it comes to the Supremes, they broke down walls and got into places. When you saw them, they had the long gloves, they had the furs, they had the scarves. They were true glamour and they were classy. They didn't show cleavage and all that until in the latter years, they dressed like women and left you wanting to come see them. When you go to a Diana Ross concert, it is an experience unlike any other. And what makes her the queen is that if something is not in the set on the playlist and you scream it out and they haven't rehearsed it, they're still singing it and they're going to do it. She's done it several times. But half these artists, I was just at a show Friday night and the artist said, we didn't rehearse that. We didn't rehearse that. We didn't rehearse that. And he said that about seven times. People were calling out songs. If it's your song, you should always at some point have rehearsed it. And I love him. Mind you me, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm a diehard fan. Love him to death. But just because there's a playlist or a set list, as an artist, you're there to keep your fans happy. And they're paying for the experience. So look how personal that is when Diana Ross says, oh, yeah. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. And there was no rehearsal and she just added it into the set instead of, oh, we can't do that. But you're my favorite artist and that's my favorite song and I want to hear that. And you're not going to do that in your set. So I can only hear it on the iPad in the car. So the Beehive will get mad. But you just need to understand it's a different time and different era. Different generation. We right now will never have another queen. We won't. Because the new era of singers, ooh, I hate to say this, are so raunchy. And there's no class and glamour in it. They don't dress up anymore. They put on whatever and come out on the stage and everything has to be so revealing. It just has to be body suits, body suits, body suits that just show everything. We didn't get that. The Supremes dressed. Diana Ross dressed. When you saw Gladys, it was amazing. The only one who we had out there that gave you legs like that was Tina Turner. And Beyonce, come on, sweetie. Come on, y'all, for y'all that don't understand. Beyonce looked up to Tina Turner. If you look at her performance, a lot of what she does is Tina Turner on the stage. Nobody moved across the stage like that. And that's one of the biggest black rock artists we have. She became a rock artist when blacks wasn't even doing rock music. 
So when you try to compare a new generation to an old generation, especially when the new generation is taking a lot of the old generation's stuff and redoing it and revamping it. So when the guy asked that question of Stephanie Mills, she couldn't answer that because Stephanie Mills looks up to Diana Ross. She wanted to be like Diana Ross. When she did The Wiz and they decided to make that into a movie, Diana Ross was a mega star. So being a mega star, even though she wasn't old enough, I think she was like 36 trying to play Dorothy. But she was a mega star. And they let that happen. And they, I mean, they let it do, of course. Did it do as well? It did well. It did well because you had Michael Jackson in there. You had some big wigs in there, some big weights in there. And so it became, you know, a great, great, great cult classic that we still watch all the time. So then there was a second piece. Um, after Stephanie did that, she went on the breakfast, breakfast Club with Charlemagne. And I'm not a Charlemagne fan. Y'all know that. I really think as an interviewer, you need to be able to ask the right questions and just stop trying to be catty about your stuff so you can always try to get something and make something out of anything. So... He asked um, Stephanie, who would she take notes from of singers? And she was like, definitely Diana Ross, Patti LaBelle, Aretha Frank Franklin, Gladys Knight. And he said, Anita Baker. And... We know Stephanie doesn't bite her tongue. She doesn't back down. She stands her ground when she says stuff. So you baited her to try to get her to say something. But what you didn't, and he probably did know this. Stephanie Mills came out before Anita Baker. She was already famous before Anita Baker even came out. When Stephanie did her first um, Broadway production in 1968. Anita Baker was 10 years old because she was born in 1958. And we're not knocking Anita Baker. We're not saying that she's not a good singer because she is a great singer. And somebody commented and said, how could you say that? Because I commented and said, you know, it was no knock to her. But how do you take notes from somebody who came after you? And they was like, well, Anita has been around since the 70s. Do your history before you say something. Anita Baker came out in the 80s. We started hearing her in the 80s. The songstress didn't come out till May of 1983. I remember when the album came out. Baby, what's my song? I love you're the best thing yet to ever come into my life. Angel. Just come on. We had some great stuff, but it didn't. And when you say something before you write it, make sure you research it. It's so easy to go find out. You can look and see when the album came out. We did not get Anita Baker until the 80s, baby. That's when, she, when I was in high school, she became the it person. 79, she... Was there? Yeah. With a group called Chapter 8. Who didn't get a, the record deal. They got dropped. So you read that part, but you didn't get the gist. When we look at Anita Baker's run, it started in the 80s. Great singer. I'm not knocking her. But here you're talking about Stephanie Mills, who was on Broadway in 1968. On a major Broadway production. It wasn't just any old thing because you guys are so young. And if I say the mom from the Brady Bunch and her husband at that time were in this Broadway production. And if I got to go on over here 
take y'all over here. Um, the production was called um, Maggie Flynn, and it was in 1968, and it was a musical by Morton DaCosta and music and lyrics by a couple of other people, but, and I'm, I'm going down here, the cast included Shirley Jones. Shirley Jones went on to be the mom on the Brady Bunch, but some of you guys are too young. No, I said that wrong. No, I said that wrong. No, I'm wrong. Let me correct myself. Not the, the <laughs> not the Brady Bunch, the Partridge family. Lord have mercy. I said that wrong. I said that wrong. See, and I'm willing to correct myself. It's the Partridge family. And that was the family that traveled around on the bus. I love that show. Yep. Yeah, so, yes. Um, total different. Total different. And it was her. And at that time, it was her husband who was Jack Cassidy. They were a part of this. And... It was nominated for a Tony Award for uh, Jack Cassidy for Best Actor in a Musical. And it ran for 82 performances with six previews. It opened October 23rd of 1968. 1968. There was no Anita Baker at that time. Sorry. Sorry, people. Sorry. So... Don't get mad when people don't give the response that you want them to get, what you want them to give. You can't compare Beyonce and Diana Ross. You can't ask Stephanie Mills and anybody <laughs> below her if they take notes from them. And when I say below, I'm talking about age-wise. That's just like... Okay, here's the perfect example. Asking Beyonce, who I don't know if she's young, who I may not, that may not be, I don't know. If Rihanna is younger, asking Rihanna, can you give me some notes and some pointers and some tips? I don't think y'all would like that. I'm real sure y'all wouldn't like that. So don't be mad when people just don't go the flow that you go, the way that you go. Everybody is not going to think the same. Everybody is not going to have the same opinion about things. So stop getting online and being bullies and all of that and keep it moving. Okay, that's it. I'm done. It's your boy Christopher Terrence Jones. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Like, share, comment, post, all that good stuff. Peace.